You ever get really drunk with your friends and start putting together a hodgepodge, absolutely out of your mind plan is to take over your city, your town, your village, or maybe a South American country like Venezuela? <coughs> Because a couple dudes with some Green Berets decided that the keel course and a couple deployments overseas was the right amount of expertise to uh, fly into Venezuela, abduct Maduro, and fly him back to the United States or a $15 million finder's fee. And it did not work out as well as they had hoped. And we're going to break that down today. Silver Corp, a privately owned security company ran by Justin Goudreau, I think that's how you say his name, was supposed to link up with 300 Venezuelan military defectors who left the military once Maduro retained his power in a questionable election and were hiding out in Colombia. Once joining the previous Venezuelan military forces in Colombia, they would then train for 45 days and after receiving military weapons and training from ex-Special Forces and Navy SEALs members, they would then infiltrate Venezuela by means of fast boats overtake the airport, Simon Bolivar Airport, and then continue on to Maduro where they would extract him, removing him from his security detachment, bring him back to Simon Bolivar International Airport requesting air assistance and then being lifted off back into Colombia or the United States. That's how it was supposed to go. We're gonna talk about how it actually went down. Jordan Goudreau, originally a Canadian citizen, not holding anything against you there, bub. The owner of Silver Corp and the brainchild of this horrible, horrible debauched coup was an E6 in the United States Army Green Beret. Now he had multiple tours overseas, but why would you pick an E6 to run a 300 man detachment to overthrow a sitting dictator, political leader, whatever you want to call? Don't you think you want somebody with like field grade experience, like a sergeant major, at least, if you're gonna go enlisted men or a first sergeant? Somebody that's done some coordinating with larger groups and elements before, or at least a fucking major or lieutenant colonel, field grade officers, guys that know how to take the big map and look it around and put dots and things and tell guys to move places. No, an E6 with team level experience. Red flag, red flag popping up, red flag. Organizing a military coup is a little different than running a security detail for Taylor Swift as she exits the Hotel Marriott in Milwaukee. I bet he fluffed the shit out of his resume like veterans do. Oh, well, uh, well uh, I mean, I was a team leader. What, six men elements constituting uh, $1.7 million of United States military funding and equipment. Send. You fucking ran a team, dude. Don't church it out. Guy number two, Juan Jose Rendon, a questionable politician whose accolades consist of leaving office due to rumors, just rumors, of him accepting bribe money from cartels. Oh wow, great guy. Oh, there's more? He was also accused of manipulating Mexico's election results in 2012. This is the guy in charge of financing this entire coup. This is, oh. This is bad. I can already feel the amount of integrity plummeting in the beginning stages of this coup. And finally, we have Major General Alcala of the Venezuelan military, who defected after Maduro won re-election in that shady thing that he did. Remember how I said in the beginning that Maduro had that $15 million bounty on him if you could bring him back to the United States? Well, there was a $10 million one out for the general. And that indictment that he shared with Maduro was for the traffic of 250 metric tons of cocaine being illegally transported in the United States. Well, I don't know how you could legally transport cocaine in the United States, but they transported it there. So stellar guy, <laughs> stellar guy, who by the way is now in custody in the US. I don't know who got the $10 million. I wonder if he did, because he turned himself in. So there's your three in charge. Inexperienced E6 Green Beret, who seems to be a little out of his court. Shady politician, dirty general. This is gonna go off without a hitch. Phase one were the major players. Phase two is the training. Whew. Originally, 300 men were supposed to join forces with Silver Group and get trained. Well, there's an issue there because that number went from 300 to 60. And if you're not good at math, 20% of what you originally thought you were gonna get is what you got. You wanted $100, here's a 20. Math. 
in any normal military operation, during the planning phases, there are certain things that you have to meet. And if you don't meet those things, the mission's just done, it's stopped, it's wiped off, we can't complete it, that's done. Don't you think you should have not done the mission when you got under 50% of the dudes you thought were gonna help you, and it's so much, so so much under fifty percent. It's twenty. It's it's half. It's less than half of the half that you needed. But we're gonna drive through because E6 Green Beret's in charge, and he's got Moxie. Now three hundred to sixty is a significant drop in manpower. But hey, these guys are getting trained by X Green Berets and Seals. Would sneak up behind people, slit their throat, fucking shoot them and catch them in the water like that fucking Valor movie with the seals. The guy shot and I caught him in the water, I lowered him down. Super secret. Now the training was just as bad, if not worse, than the individuals leading this ridiculous coup. An ex-Navy SEAL who assists in a non-for-profit training individuals in combat zones regarding medical skills and how to fix one another up was there teaching these 60 dudes and said that everybody was emaciated. Often men would skip meals throughout the day. That was the norm. And the five bomb sniffing dogs they had were just as emaciated as the handlers. All the equipment they were promised didn't come to them during the training phase. The ex-seal stated that there were men using cut off broomstick handles in lieu of weapons for training. We got 20% of the dudes who were supposed to have and none of the equipment we're supposed to use. Yo, we should keep this going. We should, this is good. We can, we can work through this. And this brings up a different question. What group is this SEAL working for? The, that he's in the middle of Colombia training some Venezuelans to go do a coup. And he's like, yeah, this is a good idea. This is what my non-for-profit should be about. At least he's training them for medical shit because you know that they're gonna get jacked up. Foreshadowing. He knew they were about to do a coup because he went and talked to Jordan and said, hey man, well, guys, no equipment. You should probably cut this off. Don't do it. Cut it off. Cut it off right now. And Goudreau was like, nah, nah, man. I'm a Green Beret. We've got a dirty politician and a coke dealing general. This is a great Netflix opportunity. We're going for it. Phase one was who's who. Phase two was training. Phase three, execution. Let's see how this bad boy's about to go down. Now, originally, they're supposed to fast boat in on some high-speed shenanigans with night vision goggles and a whole bunch of equipment, but that got shut down because, you know, drug dealing general and dirty politician E6 Green Beret that doesn't know his ass from the hole in the ground. That stuff. Oh, well, it went kind of bad because they were driving beat-up fisherman boats from Colombia into Venezuela to first take over the largest airport in the capital, the Simon Simone Simon Bolivar International Airport. I'm butchering these Spanish names. You couldn't have picked a smaller airport? There's, there's no smaller like little runways that you gotta do? You got 60 dudes, you've only got 60 dudes and you gotta take over the airport, hold it, right? You gotta hold it and then you go get Maduro with his security detail all around him. So that means that dudes out of your 60 are gonna be at the airport. So you're going over there with less than 60. And they're ready. He's already had he's already had attempts on him. Maduro's prepped and ready to go for somebody to try and take him out. So what, you're going over there with 40 dudes max, maybe? Do you think that's gonna be enough? Because once the shots start going, all it is is one phone call and one holy shit, we're being overrun. And beep boop beep, you're gonna have a whole shit ton of Venezuelan real military guys surrounding you and you're done, you're toast, you're gone. No, but, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it? Is that what you thought, dude? Not only did they do it in a shitty paddle boat, but they did it in broad daylight with their passports and expired military IDs on them. A broad daylight beach landing with weapons. You didn't even think to do it at night where people 500 fucking meters on shore can't see you? You don't even need nods. Just dudes walking around like, pay no mind here, madam. I am going to walk this way to the airport. What makes it so laughable is the two Green Berets that used to be in 10th Special Forces group. They didn't speak Spanish. How are you training these guys and going down there if you don't speak the 
Look, it's Spanish. We gotta go 500 meters that way. There's a sniper. Que pasa? No comprende, gringo? I speak Spanish. Ah, I speak Spanish. You got caught in the water before you even got to hit the beach and start walking towards the gosh dang airport. Venezuelan military was like, hey, we knew you idiots were doing this shit. Now you might say, well, how did they know? Dope deal in general, being the genius that he is, couldn't keep his mouth shut and was telling Colombian intel analysts, hey, we're gonna do this coup. Eh, I hope you're ready for it. It's gonna happen sometime, probably in May. Being next door neighbors to one another, and there's probably some pro Maduro people in Colombia, they went over and spilled the beans to the head of intel in Venezuela, who stated, we knew everything. In fact, we, the Venezuelan government under Maduro with this intel guy paid for some of the meetups. That's how intertwined Maduro's intel analysts were in this entire coup. In fact, it was so bad, an Associated Press article was put out before the coup detailing what was gonna happen during this coup. Look, it got a couple leaks there, but Another small giveaway to this coup was Mr. Dirty Politician got pulled over and in his car was like 60, 70 rifles and body armor. And the freaking Venezuelan coppers are like, hey, you're anti-Maduro and you've got all the shit in your car. We're gonna take it and we're gonna tell people about you. You don't have enough fingers to plug the holes of all the leaks in this shitty ship coup that you're trying to motorboat into Venezuela, guy. And the rest is history. Now Maduro's been saying that young fishermen helped catch these bad guys and then they called the police and that's what kicked it all off because the people of Venezuela are pro Maduro, which is a bold faced lie and obviously some pandering in order to get people in Venezuela to think that there's some huge groundswell that still supports Maduro. When in actuality, his intel director and other people in that government stated that, no, we already had infiltrators. We already knew what was going on. We were paying for half of the meetings that they were going to and we let it all happen and got them before their feet even touched the ground. Other people are saying that this was orchestrated or funded by the United States government. And let me tell you what, the United States government ain't throwing 60 dudes in some old fishing boats with no night vision goggles and some ill-fitting dirty t-shirts to go take out Maduro and bring him back to the United States. You had to go by water, didn't you? Had to use those shitty little paddle boats in order to get up onto the shore of Venezuela. You couldn't just go hacking through the brush and dense vegetation in the jungles of Venezuela, much like the manscaped lawnmower 3.0 does to the jungle between your legs. If you need to tame the jungle of your boxer brief area, the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0 is your doodad to do it. And Manscaped offers tons of fantastic products ball cleansers, moisturizers, all sorts of things to make that jungle a little less fungal. Clean up that love jungle, baby. Beat back those brambles and bushes and let that valentine vine shine. After your lady sees your mowed down cabbage patch, the only thing she's gonna wanna overthrow is her legs over your head. So go ahead and use code ANGRY20 to get 20% off your order at manscaped.com today. How did every single one of the people that they captured and put on camera looked absolutely disgusting? Not one of them had a uniform on. It was just dirty white tees and flip flops. That's how we're gonna overtake Maduro. They looked like everybody's fat, greasy uncle at a barbecue. Oh, 